Hey guys, today I wanted to do a video talking about how to ask the right questions to get the answers you're looking for. I get a lot of questions every day, of course, um, probably well above uh, over 100 on various social media platforms, my email, all that kind of stuff. So I don't always answer all of them, but I try to get to as many as I can. One of the things I see over and over and over is people ask the wrong questions. Not that any question is necessarily bad, but the way you frame it a lot of times is wrong and you can't get the answer you want if you don't ask the right question. So first big mistake people say is, what are your thoughts on insert X? First off, I, I personally fucking hate this kind of question because it's intellectually lazy. But also, you're not giving any context. So if somebody says, hey Lane, what are your thoughts on a ketogenic diet? My thoughts in terms of what? Fat loss? Um, metabolic health, cancer, insulin, um, body composition, muscle growth, uh, epilepsy, right? Like performance. There's a lot of ways that I can take that. It, 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 there's not just one lane. So you, a more appropriate question, if you wanted to talk about uh, body composition or energy expenditure, say, hey Lane, uh, what are your thoughts on a ketogenic diet for fat loss? Um, I've heard some people say that it's better for fat loss even when calories are equated. Now that you have framed the question properly, I can give you the appropriate answer. But if you just say thoughts, I'm honestly probably going to skip your question because I don't know what you're asking. Let me give you another example of why people ask the wrong uh, questions. So they'll say, does X work, right? So a lot of times what people say, does this work? Well. What do you mean by work? Almost anything can work. And people confuse something that works with something being optimal, and that's not the same thing. So for example, you can find vegans and vegetarians who have built a lot of muscle mass on lower protein diets without animal protein. That doesn't mean that that's the optimal way to do it. So did it work for them? Yeah, sure. Is it the most optimal thing they could have done? It's up for debate, but based on some various science, I would say no. Some people would argue with me on that, but hey, the point is you're asking the wrong question, not does it work? The question people usually want to ask is, is it optimal? And the other thing people mistake is me saying something might not be optimal or there's no difference compared to something else with saying that something can't work. So. I'll give you an example. I posted on Twitter numerous times um, various studies that the consensus show that if you compare uh, calorie equated, protein equated diets that differ in carbohydrate and fat, you don't see a difference in fat loss or energy expenditure on the whole. Uh, and that extends into ketogenic diets. You don't see a difference in energy expenditure. And I had somebody, when I posted this study, somebody immediately say, that's not true. I lost 50 pounds on a ketogenic diet. I'm not saying you can't lose weight on a ketogenic diet. What I'm saying is when it's compared to other calorie equated, protein equated diets, it does not appear to be superior. That doesn't mean that it didn't work for you or that your experience is false. It just means that when we compare these two, there's no difference. The other thing to always keep in mind when you ask a question is compared to what? So um, there's a guy named Thomas Sowell who is a, um, he's a financial guy and or a financial expert I would say. Now he's more fiscally conservative so some people may hate him. I don't really care. I like the way he frames questions. One of the things he always says is um, compared to what, at what cost, and where's your hard evidence? So you can attack almost any uh, claim with those three pieces of questions. Somebody says, for example, uh, vegetarian diet is uh, better for muscle building, right? Okay, well, compared to what? All right, are we talking about compared to a really calorie restricted diet? Or are we talking about compared to somebody who's not even lifting weights? What, what are we talking about? We need to be able to know what we're comparing it to to actually decide if the claim is valid. Um, at what cost? 
that's more of a financial question, but I can, I can give you an example. Somebody might say, uh, ketogenic diet is better. Okay, well, where's the hard evidence? We've talked about some of that previously in videos. At what cost? Okay, well, for some people, for example, um, they don't find a ketogenic diet uh, easy to stick to. A lot of people say, some people, some people say when they go on a ketogenic diet, they don't have issues with hunger anymore and they feel better and, and whatnot. That's them. Other people say, I feel ravenously hungry. I don't like the lifestyle. It limits me in what I can do. And um, so that's a cost for them, essentially. And then where's your hard evidence is, is pretty obvious. Um, it's empirical data. I don't think you guys understand how under the influence to placebo we all are. People say, I, I all the time I hear this, I switch to less processed foods and I feel better. Well, you probably do, but if you do honestly feel better, it's probably not because you're not having anything that's processed, it's because you're eating less calories now, and a lot of studies bear that out. I think people are neglecting the fact that they have been told their entire lives that certain foods are bad for them. So if they cut those out, of course they feel better because they're subject to the influence of placebo. This is why it's important that we do empirical studies that can objectively measure these markers because if we're just going off people's feelings, then there's a lot of people who feel the earth is flat. And they say, just go out, look at it, it's flat. Works for me, bro. So it's, it's fine to have feelings, everybody has feelings. I have certain feelings about things. But when it comes to science, fuck my feelings because feelings are not data. Feelings can be misinterpreted, misconstrued. We are all subject to the power of placebo. Now, that also means that sometimes you can use placebo to your advantage. I do it when I'm coaching clients. I'll, like, positive, I'll give them positive feedback sometimes. Even if I think something might be dicey and maybe it's not going to work, I'll say, I think this is going to work for you. People may say, well, that's, you know, that's really not the right thing to do, but I also understand the influence of psychology for certain people. It's not always appropriate. But we can use placebo to our advantage, and I'll, I'll give you one more example of placebo, and then I'll, I'll leave you at that. A study done years ago where they um, brought people in who had reported having allergy, allergic symptoms. And they gave them, the, they, they, they said, we're gonna give you something that's gonna help with your allergies. And they gave them basically a, a sugar pill, placebo. It, there was nothing in there. Not only did over the, the vast majority report that their allergies improved subjectively, a good portion of them, I think it was like something like 30 or 40%, actually showed physiological objective improvements in their allergies. Now, do we think that the placebo actually did anything? No, but they believed it. And since they believed it, since the mind believed it, it happened. So the, your mind and body are a lot more connected than you really think. This is also where confirmation bias comes in. People who, for example, choose one kind of dieting, like a vegetarian diet or a keto diet or, or, or whatever it is, People who choose those groups and to go in those groups, they say, oh, well, it worked so great for me. And everybody who's in our group, like, right, for like a Facebook group, yeah, look at all these people who are getting results. Well, that's a selection bias. They've, they've selectively gone there, right? That doesn't say anything about the objective measurements. So, once again, think about the logical ways that you're framing these questions and framing these arguments because it's really difficult to make progress when we're talking about science, when people can't ask the right questions or don't know how to properly analyze people's arguments. All right, guys, that's it for me for this week. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you like it, like the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And um, if you like this stuff, buy some of our shit because it helps us be able to reinvest into the business and make more good content for you guys. Thanks, I'll catch you later. Thank you.